Hello all, welcome all dear ones to a new video lesson. My name is Anjali and the topic we are discussing today is the poem Daddy written by the most celebrated, the most notable American poet Sylvia Plath. So before moving on to the poem, let's look on to a short profile of the poet Sylvia Plath. So as I said, she is one of the most notable, the most prominent American poets and novelists. She was born in Boston in America. Her lifespan is from 1932 to 1963. Her father, Otto Plath, who was a German or who was a professor in Boston University and who was also a German immigrant. Her mother, Aurelia Scarber, who was an American of Australian descent. So Sylvia Plath, she is partially a Jew too. So this is very important. So when we consider her personal life or when we analyze her poetry, especially in this, po in this poem, Daddy, her identity as a Jew is very important. Then what is so special or what is notable about Sylvia Plath is that she is notable for advancing the genre of confessional poetry. She confesses, when we read her poems, we can see that she confesses all her things. She confesses directly to the readers about what her life is, what she feels. So Daddy is one of such confessional poems. And she is also known for her two of, or two of her published collections, The Colossus and Other Poems and Ariel. She is also known for her semi-autobiographical novel, The Bell Jar, which was published shortly before her death. And she was also awarded Pulitzer Prize in Poetry in 1982, which actually made her as the first to receive this honor posthumously. And this is a very, very short profile of Sylvia Plath because she had led a very eventful life within a short span of time because she died at the age of 30 and that was a suicide. We'll come on to all those things when we discuss the poem in detail. So about the poem, Daddy, it was written in 1962 but was published in 1965 posthumously in the collection Ariel. So this should be noted. It was written in 1962 and she died in 1963 and it published in 1965. And about the structure of the poem, it consists of 16 stanzas with 80 lines. Each stanza consists of 5 lines. So we call it as a quintin. So quintin means 5 lined stanza. So in total there are 16 stanzas. And the poem is a dramatic monologue where we can find the presence of a listener. The poet or the speaker, the spo speaker of the poem is the poet herself. She often addresses someone as you. So you is her father, daddy. So this poem is actually born out of the poets or the speakers obsession with her father who died when she was only eight years old. So the poem is actually the speaker's grief over the loss of her father. But the thing is that it is not a typical obituary poem where the poet is lamenting on the death of her father, wishing for his, uh, you know, his return, everything, but nothing like that. Rather, the poet feels a kind of comfort or a kind of relief at his departure from her life. So that is really ironical. So let's move on to the poem. Oh, before that, we can say that the poem is a kind of mixed feeling of the poet. She simultaneously loves her father as well as she loves or as well as she hates her father. So the poem can be analyzed from the perspective of psychoanalysis. So we are familiar with the concept of Electra complex and Oedipus complex. So this very poem can be analyzed from the perspective of Electra complex. I hope you know what is meant by Electra complex. So if a person is having electro complex, she feels a kind of sexual attraction towards her father and a kind of hatred and jealousy towards the mother. So just like that, Sylvia Plath has a daughter who possesses this kind of electro complex. So let us come on to that when we analyze the poem stanza wise. So you can see the picture of her father, Otto Plath, on the screen. So the very poem, the title, it is titled as Daddy. It is all about a 
father-daughter relationship, how her father treated her. So the first answer, you do not tour, you do not tour any more black shoe in which I've lived like a foot for 30 years, poor and white, barely trying to breathe or a chew. So the very first answer of the poem, which begins like, you do not do, you do not do, it goes like this as a nursery rhyme scheme. We can also see the reference of a black shoe. His, her father is actually no more. He died when the poet was only eight years old. But she compares her father with a black shoe. So black is emblematic of the Nazis. So the color black has got its own significance throughout the poem. She often uses this color to make comparison with her father. So she complains, the poet or the speaker, she complains of having been trodden under the heavy boot or heavy foot of her brutal, cruel, overbearing, autocrat father. For 30 years, it was not a short time. So she complains about the suffocation and she regarded herself as a poor and white feet. A very soft and innocent girl was suffocated under this heavy foot. And she was not able to breathe or sneeze. A chew means the sound of sneezing. So she was not able to sneeze or breathe properly out of fear, out of the suffocation that she had experienced. So that was the first answer. So in the very first answer itself, we can understand how, the, how uh, was the relationship between the father and the daughter. Then coming to the second and third stanza of the poem, Daddy, I have had to kill you. You died before I had time. Marble heavy, a bag full of gourd, ghastly statue with one great toe big as a Frisco seal and a head in the freakish Atlantic where it pours green green over blue in the waters of beautiful Norset. I used to pray to recover you, Ak Ju, Ak Ju. So she confesses in the second stanza that she wanted to kill her father. She really wanted to kill her father, but he died before that. He died before she got enough time to kill him. And she also compares her father with a huge statue. For her, he appears as a gigantic statue which stretches from coast to coast of America with his toe in the Pacific, yeah, it's Pacific, with a toe in the Pacific and a head in the Atlantic, that much big he is, which means that his influence, his impact over her childhood was that huge. A bag full of gourd, there is a phrase which doesn't mean that the gourd is used in a positive way. So God is a person who is very autocrat, right? It is who is the omniscient, the omnipotent, the omnipresent person. Person, I should say. Because the father is here mentioned as a bag full of God. Which means that he controlled every part of her life. Oh, ak ju means, oh you, I pray to recover you from your sickness. So towards the end of the third stanza, we can see that she says she prayed to God to recover her father from her illness, from his illness, from his sickness. So that was really ironical. In the beginning, she says she wanted to kill her father. And towards the end, she says she prayed to recover him from his illness. So her mixed feeling, the kind of Electra complex can be seen here. Then the stanza number four and five. In the German tongue, in the Polish town, scribed flat by the roller of wars, wars, wars. But the name of the town is common. My Polak friend says there are a dozen or two. So I never could tell you where you put your foot, your root. I never could talk to you. The tongue stuck in my jaw. The tongue stuck in my jaw. So the speaker tells her father emigrated from Poland to America. Poland is a part of Germany. So he was a German, he was a Nazi. So she says that her father 
or wars are a common thing for him or war is not that strange or awkward thing for him because it is such a familiar thing for germany so for his for her father also so and the name of the town is common she she says one of her friend friend from poland who remarked that the town's name is common because in the same name there are a dozen or two but she couldn't ask her father where he actually belonged to she was not able to ask she was not at all able to speak or ask out of fear so she was really afraid of her father she couldn't ask what her his roots so that is the fourth and five stanzas then the next stanza it's stuck in a barbed wire snare her tongue it's stuck in a barbed wire snare ik 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 i could hardly speak i thought every german was you and the language of zin an inchin an inchin chuffing me off like a jew a jew to dash oshwitz belzen i began to talk like a jew i think i may well be a jew so whenever she tried to talk to her her father she feels like her tongue it was getting through a barbed wire snare you can imagine how painful it is how suffocated it is because she was not at all able to speak he was not at all approachable for a daughter usually a daughter a father cuddles her, his daughter loves her cares her she didn't get all these string things from the part of his father her father the father is a german thus a nazi so she sees her father in every german and the german language appears obscene to her and she compares her father to that of nenshin a train which carries the jewish prisoners including herself to the nazi concentration camps the places mentioned in the stanza are the places where the concentration camps were settled belzen auschwitz dachau etc so she considers herself as a jew because her mother is an american of australian descent so she is partially a jew so she considers herself as a jew so she says she may well be a jew i think i i began to talk like a jew and i think i may well be a jew then the eighth stanza the snows of the tyrol the clear beer of vienna are not very pure or true with my gypsy ancestors and my wet luck and my tarot pack and my tarot pack i may be bit of a jew so this is why she says she is a jew because the snows of the tyrol and the clear beer of vienna which are the most you know the most white the most uh, clear and true you know pure things but the nazi the german people they don't even consider these things are pure they consider even the snows of the tyrol and the clear beer of vienna as impure so what will be my condition because i am not a nazi completely i am partially a jew so in my my body the jewish blood is also flowing so they won't consider me as a pure nazi so i am a bit of a jew so the speaker actually criticizes the nazis idea of racial purity and she fears and she she fears that she will have the same fate as the jews jews had in the germany so that was the eighth stanza then i have always been scared of you with your laugh wave your gobble jig you and your neat mustache and your add in eye bright blue panzer man panzer man oh you not god but a swastika so black no sky could squeak true every woman i was the fastest the boot in the face the brood brood heart of a brood like you this is how the poem goes she says i've always been scared of you i didn't understand your language 
and she closely she associates her father closely with that of a nazi she says he was an aryan with blue eyes and a neat mustache he resembled a german tank driver tanzerman means a german tank driver and it, there is a reference to the swastika which is a symbol used by the nazis in their flags and it is black so again the reference to the color black so black for her is a devilish color or a devilish symbol so she says her father is not a god but a swastika but a devil for her yeah she satirically says that every woman adores a fascist like her father every woman adores a fascist like her father and being beaten by their boots she actually means that the women actually allow themselves to be beaten or allow themselves to be ruled by the patriarchal rules so here also we can see the mixed feeling this in every woman we can see plath herself plath can be one among such women right so her electra complex again sometimes she adores her father even though he is a nazi even though he suffocates her she adores her father she loves her father yes then stands on number 11 and 12 you stand at the black board daddy in the picture i have a few a cleft in your chin instead of your food but no less a devil for that no not any less the black man who bit my pretty heart in two i was ten when they buried you at twenty i tried to die and get back 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 to you i thought even the birds would do i thought even the bonds would do so she says she pictureizes her father who is standing at the blackboard he was a professor in boston university i said to you in the beginning so the picture i have of i have a few as a picture that you standing in front of a blackboard usually the devils have cleft on their foot but here she says her father he has cleft in her in his chin we can see a kind of mark when we look at the picture of otter blood a mark here in his chin but no less a devil for that he is not less brutal than a devil yeah so he, again uh, the reference to the black color you know the black board every time she associates the color black with her father yeah then she says the father who has cut her innocent heart into two he screwed her she completely he completely destroyed her she recalls that he died when she was 10 but actually he died when she was only 8 then she says she tried to come back to you she tried to come or go back to her father by attempting for suicide her electra complex again she wanted to go back 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 to her father so that is an instance or example for electra complex but they pulled me out of the sack and they stuck me together with glue and then i knew what to do i made a model of you a man in black with a main come fluke and the love of the rack and the screw and i said i do i do So daddy I'm finally true the black telephones are at the root the voice is just can't warm true then she says every attempt of suicide was failed and she had to come back to the life again then she says then i knew what to do what should i do next so the persons who have electra complex or father fixation they have they always longing for uh, a man who exactly look or acts uh, like her father so here uh, the poet silvia plath she says she made a model of her father in black with a nazi look on the face she actually mentioned her marriage with the poet ted hughes a british poet so their marital life was really 
uh, it was very troublesome it was very strange so she again uh, she made a model of her father which means that her husband was exactly like her father she chose a man who had the same mind of cruelty as her father who loved to rack and screw rack and screw are symbolic or the instruments that are symbolic of violence she says with her husband she feels as if she is with her father so she doesn't need him anymore she doesn't need her father anymore daddy i am finally true i don't need you then the final two stanzas of the poem if i have killed one man i have killed two the vampire who said he was you and drank my blood for a year seven years if you want to know daddy you can lie back now there is a stake in your fat black heart and the villagers never liked you they are dancing and stamping on you they always knew it was you daddy daddy you bastard i'm true so this is how she ends her poem she says in her mind she has killed both her father and her husband and she compares her husband with a vampire who sucks her blood for years for 7 years if you want to know the years it is 7 years daddy so towards the end she says she thrown away the memories of her father with the deed of with with uh, the deed of driving a stake through his heart in the graveyard she says the villagers didn't like you since your tom they are dancing they are making merry out of your departure they were very happy so she says now i'm finally true daddy i'm true i don't need you because i actually wanted to get rid of you i actually wanted to kill you from my memories from my mind and i'm succeeded she was really depressed with the deeds of her father with the memories of her father and towards the end we can see that she says she succeeded i'm finally true daddy that you bastard and finally true now i don't need you so this is how the poem ends so when moving on to the major themes of the poem we can see that men and women so this is a poem about one woman and two men so men and women can be a major theme death patriarchy love laws hatred freedom and captivity even history can also be the major themes discussed in the poem about the part of literary devices we can see that the poem is a reservoir of literary devices it ranges from assonance consonance alliteration metaphor simile personification enjambment onomatopoeia imagery it goes like this for example when the poet uses or compares her father with a black shoe her husband with a vampire uh, what to a huge statue etc she actually makes an implied comparison between two different objects that's an example of metaphor when she says and your eye and i bright blue she makes use of the literary device imagery when she says a chew or ik 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 an amatobia when she says an engine an engine chuffing me off like a jew she personifies a train personification so in this way the poet has used an enormous range of poetic devices in this poem which added more deeper meaning with a tinge of beauty to the poem so that's about uh, then smiley big as a frisco seal i began to talk like a jew an example of simile so in this way it goes on so let me conclude let me conclude the poem with a quote made by silvia plath about this poem daddy let me read it for you the poem is spoken by a girl with electra complex her father died while she thought he was god her case is complicated by the fact that her father was also an azi and her mother very possibly part jewish 
In the daughter, the two strains marry and paralyze each other. He, she has to act out the awful little allegory once hour before she is free of it. So that was a comment made by Plath herself about the swan daddy. So that was daddy. Finally, finally she succeeded. She said, you, daddy, you bastard, I'm true. I don't need you. She could get away or she could, she could really give up all the memories or she could really give up all his memories from her mind. So that was daddy. So this is one reading of the poem daddy. There are several readings from different perspectives. So that is all about uh, this video lesson. Thank you. Happy learning.